So starting off with our breaking news coverage from Ukraine, where lawmakers loyal to the president have gathered in the eastern city of Kharkov, declaring that local authorities must take control of their respective regions, bypassing any rulings from the capital. Let's get more live from RT's Maria Finoshina, who is in Kharkov. So, Maria, what exactly are those officials saying? Well, Matt, the resolution that the representatives of the authorities of the eastern and southeastern Ukraine adopted here today after their emergency meeting here in the city of Kharkov uh, says that uh, uh, since today they uh, no longer uh, 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 obey the central authorities that they think are paralyzed, and since today uh, local authorities will be a unique force in charge of all political decisions here on the ground. This resolution also says that there are huge doubts that all uh, recent decisions and laws approved by the country's parliament are constitutional and deliberate. Uh, although it was not yet particularly clear from this document whether uh, local authorities here uh, recognize or, or don't recognize these uh, decisions and these laws. Well, this resolution in fact means a huge split of power here in the country and of course that's this will add to the division that we already see not only in Ukraine but even here in the eastern part of the country. Uh, we are in Kharkov now and it's known as a capital of uh, the eastern Ukraine that traditionally supports uh, the president Viktor uh, Yanukovych and uh, uh, it, it used to be a very uh, unanimous region supporting more uh, eastern policies than the policies of western countries but we see that today population here is divided from one on one hand, they are afraid that opposition, including right-wing and all those radical elements, uh, can come here from Kiev. And it's not very hard. It's less than 500 kilometers away from the capital. Uh, and we are hearing uh, serious calls, uh, mostly these messages sent from uh, through uh, social media, to stand up and to defend the city and the region. But from another hand, both politicians and uh, ordinary people here uh, on the ground are not totally happy with what Viktor Yanukovych is doing as a president and particularly uh, this region again uh, mostly pro eastern uh, uh, region than pro western uh, uh, is disappointed uh, by uh, the Europe uh, uh, broadened uh, uh, early poll deal that uh, Viktor Yanukovych signed with the opposition uh, earlier um, on Friday and the vivid illustration of this division that we see here and we see in the entire country is uh, this meeting that you can see I hope behind me there are those who support uh, uh, the local authorities uh, and uh, even the president uh, still here but also there are those who call themselves opposition and they say that they don't want to uh, live in the country ruled by uh, Yanukovych and uh, his people and uh, it's so far it's peaceful but no one can say where uh, it's going to lead and how it may end given uh, all the tensions that we've seen already here in the country in the last months. All right, RT's Maria Finoshin alive for us in Kharkov, Ukraine. Thank you very much for that update. Well, if you look at the crowds in the center of the capital, Kiev, it looks like support for Yanukovych's resignation is overwhelming, but calls for his impeachment have been out there on the web for some time now. Let's take a look at how much response they've been getting so far. Now, this is a petition that you can see next to me here uh, from anti-government activists that was launched back in December. It managed to get about 100,000 uh, signatures so far, but it's a small margin of the total population of the country, which is about 50 million people. And as also can be seen, <clears throat> on the petition itself, some of those who backed the impeachment didn't even live in Ukraine itself. 